So in order to create the avo perfect avocado toast, you need a couple things. Obviously, avocado. Since I'm prepping and counting all of my macros, I'm, I only use 20 grams of avocado. So you can do more. I would typically do more. Um, I usually would do probably an ounce per slice um, of avocado. That's 28 grams. But today, 20 grams, it's a low carb day. So one slice of Ezekiel bread, which is 15 carbs. I'm doing one egg. I've already sprayed the pan. Oh, love that sound. What else you're gonna need is Greek yogurt. I use the zero fat variety. I usually use phage or SIGs. Both will be great for you guys. Also, um, Dijon mustard. Now you can't go with just the typical, you can do the typical yellow mustard, but it doesn't taste as good. And I just kind of eyeball it, um, what I want in there. So now I have, I put about 15 grams of Greek yogurt, 20 grams of avocado. Again, um, base it upon your macros with a little bit of Dijon mustard. And what you're gonna wanna do, just mash it all up. It's gonna turn a nice, a nice greenish brown, and it's gonna get like really whipped. It's gonna look like, you know, like the, like the avocado toast you see on, on social media and stuff. A very nice whipped, you know, I typically would have used more avocado. In fact, I'm gonna just use a little bit more only because I feel like, look how cool this is too. I feel like I need a little bit more avocado in here. I really feel like it should be a, uh, a little bit more avocado than it should Greek yogurt. So I know I already have 20 grams of avocado in there already. And I'm just gonna use a little bit more. So that's about, I now have about mm, 28 grams of avocado in there. So pretty much one ounce here. While that egg is cooking, I'm kind of watching it. We're gonna let that, I want it to be, I, I love that over easy, that over easy egg on a slightly crispy piece of Ezekiel bread. Again, I like Ezekiel bread because it's sprouted brains. I use the sesame variety, and all of a sudden, this all starts coming together. We're gonna throw a little bit of peri-peri sauce, Nando's peri-peri sauce. I freaking love Nando's. And then we're also gonna throw a little bit of sea salt, just some big sea salt in there. And again, we're gonna mix that all around. And then I also have out the spinach and the egg. That egg is gonna be over medium. We're gonna also want to just kind of hit this a little bit with some salt. Um, I don't have any ground pepper. I need to get that actually at the store today. A little bit of peri-peri on that as well. And we're gonna flip that bad boy. Just go right here and the, you, you don't want this yolk to break. So I have it, it's gonna be pretty crispy on one side. And I'm just gonna let that cook probably for about 20 to 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna turn it off and leave it in the pan for a second. It's gonna continue to cook a little bit, but I want it to where it's just over medium. So a little bit, a little bit firm, but then that yolk is nice and runny. We're gonna put this whipped avocado. Mmm, I pop it's so good. That's pretty much done. We're gonna take it off the heat. Boom. Just take that out. Yep, yep. Look at that. I'm actually gonna make some egg whites after this and also mix the egg whites with that, with the remaining part. We're gonna put, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm gonna put the spinach down. Little spinach leaves on there. We're gonna slice, we're gonna slice up a tomato on top. Nice juicy tomato on top. And what I'm also gonna do, just I want that nice, nice little salt bay there. And then bada boom, bada bing. The perfect avocado toast. Bro, once you eat this, once you eat this deliciousness, you will never, ever, ever want to eat an egg another way. We have the avocado, the Greek yogurt, so it's nice and Nice and that nice whipped, like it looks beautiful. Food Network, get at me. You guys want to check out the yolk here? Check out that yolk, oh, perfect. So nice and firm on one side and then just slightly runny on the middle. I overcooked it just a titch. It's a little bit, that's more like over medium well, but still gonna work out perfect. 
I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna enjoy this thing. I wanna, hold on, I wanna say something before we go in there and the music gets loud. Doing this prep, you know, prep's always got its ups and downs. I've been doing, you know, I haven't done a prep in like two and a half years. And, you know, I'm moving, got a lot of my, on my mind. And tonight I was just like, you know what? I don't really feel like lifting. I don't really feel like giving it my all. And I don't want to go to Gold's gym because there's going to be people there watching me. Like, there's going to be people being like, oh, you know, there's Steve lifting. And I, you know, I, I didn't want to have to strap it up. I didn't want to have to put on my helmet and go to work. But then I realized there's a lot of pain and hurt in this world. There's a lot of people they don't have the opportunity to come to a gym and work out. And I'm sitting here stressed out, complaining because my life, because I got a gym to open up, because I want to go move, I want to better my life, I want to do all these things that are exciting, but tiring, and yet I don't want to come and put forth 100% effort. So I just had to sit there for a second. And I know a lot of you guys can relate to this, because we all have things, you know, we all have things that, that, that take our energy. And you know, Research shows that it can be a small thing or a big thing. It still weighs on us pretty equal in terms of like our problems we think are bigger than they are. And when we do have huge problems, we deal with them better than expected. Uh, so I'm just gonna say this real quick. Like if you have the ability, like I have the ability right now to go in there and give it my all, you have to, you have to. It is your obligation to do that on behalf of everyone else out there in the world that can't be doing that. Like, again, it might seem trivial, and it's small, it's a workout, but it's an outlook on life that you wanna take with you. It's an outlook that you're not going to get this moment back. I'm not gonna get this workout back in my life. I'm gonna be laying on my deathbed one day, hopefully when I'm old in a hospital. I don't wanna look back and think about the things that I probably should have put more effort into but didn't. Why not just have that mentality that, and it, it gets tough. It, if we could carry that enthusiasm, that, that, that passion, that drive every day, the best way you can do that is to be grateful, to look around this world and, and look at those people who are struggling. And it's not easy to do. There's so much pain and suffering in this world. But if you look out there and you notice how good you have it, and you guys can all sit there and say, oh, Steve, you got it so good. I was in your shoes when I first started out. I was a divorced kid who didn't graduate from college. I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do. I was living with my parents, working at a supplement shop, working at Texas Roadhouse, getting in two workouts. But you know what? I lived for those workouts. I looked forward to those workouts. That, that was my sanctuary, going into the gym and just, just giving that my all. So as, you know, as, as success grows, sometimes you forget those things. As you get more success in your life, sometimes you forget what got you there. Look around the world. Look at other people that have less than you do and, and think about think about where you are right now and how you got there, the good, the bad, whatever it is. That's on you. Whatever life you have right now, that's on you. And it's your job to make it better. So that being said, take that with you. Take that into the gym, wherever you're at. Take it where you're going to work, going to school, wherever you are, and give it your all because you owe it to yourself and you owe it to those people out there who can't do it for themselves. Let's go train. Once a week, I just want to max out muscle ups just so I don't forget how to do them. You know, they, they, they got that saying, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So I like messing around with muscle ups. We just knocked out six or seven sets. He asked Chandler, he'll say eight sets of pull ups. I'm going to do max out, max one rep or one set of muscle ups. <laughs>
Not too bad for post pull-ups. We gotta get those 15, 20 though, even after pull-ups. If we were fresh, I can even get 12. I wanna get 15 tired. For a show, lifting is the easy part. Diet's the hardest. Posing and just mentally being on that grind, waking up at early, going to bed early, posing. Lifting's actually the fun part. Gold's gym posing room. A little less than six weeks out. It's been so long since I've, I've done this stuff. So, come up here. I practice my bodybuilding poses and I just hold them for a while. And I can tell I got a long way to go. It, the hardest thing is to stand on stage and sit there and hold it tensed with a smile on your face. And also, it just polishes off everything. It makes you look so much harder as you get leaner. You're posing, you're posing, you're posing, isometric holds, flexing. If you're doing a comp and it's your first one, I suggest start posing 12 weeks out. If you've kind of been doing it for a while, eight weeks out, I'm starting about six weeks out. So I'm definitely behind the eight ball. I'm gonna test you guys' as golden era of bodybuilding trivia. Tell me who's outlined this. I, 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 I don't know if it's for sure, but I'm, I'm fairly certain this was after a classic bodybuilder. Let me know who you think this looks like. Pause this video, write it down. I'll give you a second to do that. Pause now. This Serge Nubray. That outline right there, I'm telling you. Go watch Pumping Iron. Look at that chest. The shape, the weight, everything. Serge Nubray, maybe with a little bit of a filter. Uh, 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 uh,